And I'm back with another release of Commodore 64 programming. This time, Series Part 3, Bouncy City Zen Sprites by Deadline. That's right, that's me. We're about to get crazy up in here. Crazy with the cheese whiz. So you thought that Hello World with colors was kind of out there? Well, let's just get started. First thing we're wanna gonna do is to have some sprites. program that I use to make sprites is called sprite pad and the link will be in the description now I've already created some sprites to accelerate this video so I'm going to open the project cities in sprites and there we have it now what we're going to want to do in order to get this into our source code is go to file export as ASCII 2 text sprite export sprite data ASM listing yep now in here we'll name it sprites.asm hit save and you'll see it popped over here in our part 3 folder there's a couple things that we're gonna have to do with the output to make it work with the code first of all semicolons or comments in other assemblers kick assembler uses double slashes in uh, the slash star method of commenting now these labels we don't need all of them so we're just going to take out the ones we don't need the first one it does need and we'll leave it in but we can actually just remove all the spaces too because it's all one big memory block and rename it to city zen sprites and save that um, one other thing that I need to mention before we get started is I've created an include folder and I've created a file called constants.asm and in here I pretty much just assigned some values to some constant um, keywords that way it'll make this um, source code a little bit easier to read so in order to import that constant file I was just talking about we'll do uh, hash import and then dot dot slash include slash constants dot asm all right there's only one more thing that we need before we can get into the guts of this and that is a sign -S table and in order to get that we're going to need to run a program in vice called sinus maker version 2.1 by LSD and it's on the CSDB web page and I'll include a link below so we'll run that and it comes up in the vice simulator and it's called sinus maker there's some information about it you hit space to continue now we're gonna want to make a complete sinus you also have option to, option for low and high but we're not going to use those. We're going complete sinus. Now it's asking you where do you want to store this at. So that's memory location. So let's do 49152 as the memory location. Memory length will go 255 bytes. Minimum sinus value. And this is going to be how far up on the screen the sprites want to be. So let's just say 1 and max is 32 so we'll give it a a short range to do its traversing and now as you can see it's creating the sinus in the 
have stored memory locations. And to speed this up, let's just do warp mode. We'll warp mode it, okay. Alright. Now, here where it says you want to restart again or save the sinus, we're going to ignore that. We're going to go over here, move it to the side a little bit. Now you want to go to File and Monitor, and this will bring up the device's built-in machine language monitor. And here we can actually dump the memory location, which is C C thousand in hexadecimal, and it was only 255 bytes if you remember. So we'll go C F F C zero F F. And it should dump out the sign table. And there it is. Alright, so now what we'll have to do is we can select all of this table. And unfortunately, the Vice Monitor doesn't have built in copy and paste functions up here in the menus, but Control C just works just fine. So hit Control C and it will copy it to the clipboard. Then you can go back over to you can close that Commodore 64 program out and we'll go to part 3 folder, create a new file we'll name it sinus table.asm hit control V. Now this isn't going to work we're going to have to reform this data a little bit so first thing we can do in VS Code is if you hold down Alt and Shift and then put your mouse cursor right here at the very bottom right hand corner of all this data and then hit Alt and Shift you can actually drag up in a box and then once you get all that selected you just hit Delete and that section will go away right and so then the next thing is same thing over here on the left hand side click at the bottom left hand corner of the data block right here alt and shift and then you can select a block of code like this but we want to leave the greater than c colon to begin and I'll show you why in just a second once we have those sections highlighted. We'll hit delete to get rid of them. And now we can start doing some replacing. So we'll select all this and then in VH code or VS code you hit control H it brings up your replace dialog box. Um, first thing is we want to get the greater than C colon. Oh, let's try clicking on selection. Oh, there was a space to begin with. Okay, so greater than C colon. It says there's 16. And what we'll want to do there is replace that with dot B Y T E byte and then put a space dollar sign and uh, then click on replace all and now it changed all those to byte dollar sign in front of there um, next thing is I want to select everything again go over here and change greater than C colon to space space and then replace it with just one space so when we're taking two spaces and replacing it with just one space there we go and then we'll select everything again this time we'll take a space and we will replace it with a com a comma dollar sign and it looks like we're going to have a problem at the beginning, but we can reform that. No problem. 
<clears throat> and the final thing is we'll select everything again and then in the top box for find dot byte comma dollar sign and we'll change that to dot byte space and that should restore everything yep all right, so now we've got a uh, kick assembler formed data block of memory. Let's go to the top of that. Name it sinus table colon, and that will put a label for sinus table. Okay, going back to the city is in six sixty four part three dot asm. We want to add in hash import um, sprites.asm and hash import sinus table.asm and that will include those data blocks. We may have to um, change the um, location in memory where they load in but that's not an issue we can change that in a minute. Um, so let's get started with some assembly using Kick. Kick Assembler has a built-in keyword called dot var, and we can start assigning some variables. Well, first thing we want to do is make some sign counters. Sign counter is zero equals, and then let's select a memory address. Let's select a zero nine zero. Uh, var sign counter one equals zero a nine one and on and on two three four five six we'll need one more seven make sure you change these memory locations so they don't overlap and then another variable called color flipper. This is for the color cycle because we're going to make a color table in a minute. Um, let's make a couple of constants here. Constant um, x position equals dollar sign 6f and this is going to be for the sprites starting x position and then constant y position dollar sign 55 this will be the base y value that the sign table will be added to and let's actually go back up here before we start importing stuff and put our basic upstart in Start dollar sign zero eight one zero start equals dollar sign zero eight one zero and that's where the memory is going to load into you and start running and just to be safe let's put a jump to jump JMP to begin. code and now it'll load in the sprites on the sinus table after that and now we'll say begin code is our label this is where you're going to jump to and first thing let's do is set, an inter set the interrupt flag it's SEI so turn off the interrupts. Let's change the background colors to black border color, background color. And this um, reason I'm able to do it this way is because 
of the constants um, file I made. So it's a little easier to read, if you can see. Um, let's clear the screen. Um, subroutine, kernel, char out. If you remember from the hello world, that's exactly what we just did there. Let's move this down. Okay. Let's load accumulator with hashtag dollar sign 7f and store the accumulator at sprite enable memory location and that is the sprites that are going to be enabled there's only seven for cities in and that's why it's not ff255 now the next thing let's load in hashtag light gray color and assign that to the sprite multicolor zero reg address and load accumulator with purple and store that at the accumulation at sprite multicolor one load the accumulator with zero and store the accumulator at sprite msbx now what I just did was set up some basic sprite initialization this will get them on the screen and at the right location the sprite msbx at the end is because sprites only have or 8 bits only has 255 values and so the screen resolution of the C64 is greater than 255 <clears throat> so those uh, it stores the high byte of the sprite X locations alright so let's start defining the sprites 2C load accumulator with 2C store the accumulator at sprite 0 pointer load the accumulator with hashtag 2D these, we may need to change these depending on where it loads in the sprite data but this is basically just a pointer to those to the location where it loads in um, load accumulator with dollar sign 2E store accumulator sprite 2 pointer we can copy and paste to make this easier and faster to F 30 31 change to 3, 4, 5 and one more so load accumulator with 32 and sprite pointer 6 ok <clears throat> And now let's position those sprites on the screen. So we define our X position up at the top in a constant so we can store the accumulator sprite 0x. We'll do a cop copy and paste again to make things a little quicker. And these are some positions that I've already pre-calculated. This will be the T sprite. It's moved over 22 in addition to the original X position. This is the Y sprite. And it's going to be 36 greater than the original X position, and so forth and so on. So this one will be 4A. Oh, these should be hex, I think. Let's see. Yep, okay. 
4, sprite 4, load the X position with 5E, store that in sprite 5X, dollar sign 72, and this is sprite 6 location, X location. Okay, <clears throat> now for the Y position on these sprites, they're all going to be the same. So we can load in the Y position constant. Store that accumulator in sprite 0Y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And all of the sprite Y locations. Just like that. Now that we got our sprites on the screen, <clears throat> let's change the initial color to dark gray and store that accumulator in the sprite color registers. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, Three, four, five, six. And we want to offset on the sinus table to give it that wavy effect. So in order to do that, we'll have to change in the values of sign counters from the variables that we created at the beginning. Sign counter. So pretty much this times six, but these are going to be offset a little bit. So then we'll go 52 and then 70. Now these are just some values that I came up with. If you want your sine wave to be different, you can change any of these values and it will have some effects on how it renders to the screen. Right, that should be all we need. Six for the six sprites. Alright, so then we'll need to create a loop label, title loop, and then what we're going to do next is we're going to load accumulator with 10, which is 16, and then compare that with the VIC raster counter. This is where your raster is on the screen. It's, it can also be used as a, sort of a timing mechanism because <clears throat> it's always going to be um, at a certain cycle where these rasters are. So we'll branch of carry clear to title loop. So let's, next thing we want to do is increment the sign counter zero by one increment sign counter one increment is a opcode that increments a certain memory location So let's load X with sign counter zero. This is going to get the memory, the value of the memory address, <clears throat> what's stored in it. Then we're going to load the accumulator with sign table. Then we're going to add the Y pos, Y position, constant. I'm going to store that in the accumulator 
or no, we'll store the accumulator at sprite 0 y and then we'll do the same thing pretty much six times So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to update the um, sine wave position for the Y location. Think of these sine counters as a cursor for the sine table. load the accumulator with hashtag dollar sign DF compare that with the Vic raster counter branch carry clear to title loop <clears throat> we only want to update this within a certain raster range so that's what that's doing Load X with color flipper. Increment X. Compare X with zero E. And then we'll branch if not equal to color jump. load X with zero put our color color jump label store X in color flipper and then we'll load accumulator with color table comma X and we have yet to create the color table then we'll store the accumulator at sprite multicolor one and jump to title loop. Now for the color table, it's really pretty easy. Just create the color table label, then dot byte do purple, dark gray, dark gray, gray, light gray, white, cyan, white, light gray, gray, dark gray, dark gray, and purple. And let's just see, and this is what, um, up here where it says compare x with 0e, that should be the length of this color table. So let's check it out. Zero one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold on, I lost count. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A, B, C. Hmm. So maybe we should change this to C. All right. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> now, just so that we know where our sprites and signs table are going to load, we're going to make sure that they load in the proper place. So. Alright, so what we can do here in this case is instead of having the jump to begin code, let's just leave begin code in there as a label anyway. Let's take the import statements for sprites and sign this table and then just go all the way to the very bottom. And let's put the sinus table first and sprites second. But before we load in the sprites, let's put a location of memory to where we know where they're at and which is signed to the sprite pointers up here in this section. Okay, <clears throat> now this program should load up and run if I hit compile on it, so let's see what happens. Oh, I've got a syntax error at line 30. Okay, I'll put a space in there accidentally. So let's try it again. Line 146 has an error. Line 146, oh, there should be a dollar sign in there to indicate that it's a hexadecimal value. So, sign table, line 106. Oh, I don't know why. Because we named this wrong. Sign table, so we should name it. Alright, so let's try it one more time. Oh. There we go. Close, but there's no colors and such going on. So let's try and see what's going on here. <clears throat> oh, by the way, after a memory location address uh, assigns, you can put a label at the end. So we'll put a label there. <clears throat> it looked like it's not transferring into multicolor mode. So let's take a look at the multicolor enable. Multicolor zero, multicolor. Hmm. Okay, so what I did was, up here in the beginning, we should have stored the accumulator at sprite multicolor, as well as sprite enable. So let's try this again. There we go. Now we're getting exactly what was intended. All right, so there you have it. We went through the uh, making of the sinus sprite that you see on the screen right now. And um, so that was pretty cool. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, let me know in the comments if there's better ways to do this than what I just showed you. There probably is. Um, and also let me know if there's a certain topic you want me to cover in the future.